everybody, welcome back to another episode of Tubby Talk with me, Terry from Terry Lakey Films, and the two owners of Tubby Robot Ice Cream Factory here in Maniac. They are Chris McGuire and Steve Wright Jr. That's right, and today we are going to do what we always do, which is talk about video games. We want you to talk to us about video games. We want you to know that anytime you can come down to Tubby Robot and talk vids with this character, this character. If I'm around in the corner eating a Sunday, <laughs> leave me alone, let me finish, and then talk to me <laughs> about video games. But that's what this is about. So uh, welcome to our community, and we're so glad to have you. Today, we're going to talk about um, Old Terror Bear took some time off from gaming. Good, probably three to four years, but a, a, essentially a generation. Dark times. Dark times. Dark times. <laughs> but now I'm back, thanks to these guys. <laughs> I am uh, back in action, but I missed a lot of the hits that were on PS3, Xbox 360, PS4, Xbox One. Um, I missed a ton of that stuff, but these guys played it, and so they're going to tell me what I missed. Certainly. So guys, what did I miss? I think we'll start Steve off on this one, because you played even more than me. Yeah, so I had um, an Xbox 360. I bought it, um, I upgraded for my GameCube, sorry to say, when Mass Effect came out um, in 2007. I believe. Which was sort of late in the 360 cycle, or the, the PS3 cycle? It was, yeah, it was, it was like about halfway. And it came out, the Mass Effect 1 was just for Xbox 360. It was a Microsoft exclusive. They actually published the first game. And then 2 and 3 were also on PS3, published by EA, mm -hmm. after EA bought Bioware. And then, um, but yeah, so Mass Effect series, it was a great series that took advantage of that I said like sixth generation console, I guess? Seventh, I think Sixth or seventh generation, yeah, whatever the generation was. It took great advantage of the generation's hardware. <laughs> and what it did was it allowed you to have cinematic style vistas in the Unreal 4 engine, I think it was. Um, so so you had lots of pop in. Yeah, this is during yeah, game yeah, yeah. Like during gameplay, you had like, like wonderful like deep backgrounds. You had, um, it took place in space and on different planets and different space stations. So there were lots of different, um, like everything was just very, well, well designed, mm -hmm. and because you used Unreal um, Four Engine, you had depth of field, so you had lots of so there were a lot of conversations between characters. So we're close up on the character's face, and then you see like the backgrounds blurred out. Oh, it's like cinematic. Yes, yeah, so, so it's very cinematic, and for the first time, you're able to kind of control your dialogue options in a cinematic universe and shoot guns and lasers at people and go pew pew pew. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was all like voice acted, every single line. Yeah, everything was. Perfect. There's like tens of thousands of lines of there, voice yeah, acting. There, there's like hundreds of hours of like just voice acting done in that game and there's also alien sex which was part of the big controversy <laughs> around it when um a bunch of news um agencies got a hold of the alien sex scene and started spreading that around but there was much more to the game <laughs> <Yeah. series laughs> whole. Now, humanoid my, alien sex scene yeah. or tentacles yeah. humanoid well, but they had tentacles the ones oh, the alien race had tentacles on their head it was hair okay but yeah, so then but there's a whole series of those games, and it was transformative for me because I loved Bioware's games ever since um, Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. Yeah, way back in the way they yeah. It was a, yeah. So then there's PC, right? Yeah, th yeah, that's on the, PC. Just, when the skull on the yeah on the game on the cover on yeah. the box, yeah. And then it's a, the um, D and D based game they mm -hmm. made, and then they had um, Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars. Um, but oh, it they was, did that. Yeah, yeah so it, it was the same style as that. So it was the, you had the dialogue choices, you had the morality choices, good or bad. Um, rather simplified, but it kind of focused the gameplay more because you can go either one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And if you compromised, you kind of missed out on the most a game had, the best a game had to offer. Mm -hmm. Had to offer. Yeah, it was like very role playing. Like it yeah. put the role playing back into RPG. Yeah. yeah. Where had it gone? Where had it gone? Yeah. It had gone to mostly mechanics yeah. of role-playing games. Okay. Turn-based fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, there's much turn-based fighting, lots, um, lots of emphasis on stats, but not so much emphasis on character interaction. Oh, or I if there was, it was scripted character interaction. Mm -hmm. Like, when you run into um, Frog in Chrono Trigger, you don't have a choice whether or not... Well, I guess you do have a choice whether or not... <laughs> well, Chrono Trigger is a special game. Yeah, but, but they don't say, like, do you want to take this path or that path, and if you take this path, let's see what happens. Let's see what branches off of there. It was kind of like, you can either do it or not. Mm -hmm. oh, it was like it was hardcore choose your own adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Choose your own adventure that remembers everything you did and like changes accordingly. Yeah. Is this yeah. one of the games where you can like be a bad guy or be a good guy, depending like, on what you do? Kind of, yeah, like they had a, a system, it was called the Paragon Renegade system. So you could either be like a Paragon of Justice and you stand up for the needy and you're like, I will do what's right at all, at all times. Or you could be a Renegade who would, like in my playthrough, there's a reporter that keeps asking you questions about your classified mission, 
and you have an option after like the third time they ask you a question to punch them in the face. <laughs> well, no, no, I think you shoved them and knocked the camera out their hand, mm -hmm. which I did because I was playing Renegade and I was like, that's what a Renegade would do. But they also got went to deeper choices, such as there was a mission, it doesn't spoil you too much, but there's a mission with one of your teammates and he's really upset with how you're handling things. Like based on choices you made earlier in the game. Mm -hmm. And then depending on how much he dislikes your choices, he will pull a gun on you. And you have to make the you have to make the choice through dialogue whether or not to try to talk him down or just shoot him and get him out of your face because he's interrupting like a galaxy saving mission. So what's a renegade do? So like what I did as a renegade, the character was kind of a renegade character already. So I, I appealed to his renegade, so his like badass side, and I was like, <laughs> you could I was like you could shoot out right now, but I'm going to kill you, mm -hmm. or we can talk this out later and you know come to terms. It kind of sounds like a Superman, Batman sort of thing going <laughs> please, on. Please don't compare it to that. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, 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 so this is this good versus good or evil? And more, like you said, like Superman, Paragon of Justice, or Batman, dark, um, shadowy, you know. By any means necessary. By any means necessary type, yeah. type figure. Well, you know, that makes a lot of sense because I remember when I tried to get back into games and some of the things that actually dissuaded me from, from rejoining was playing games that made me have too many choices. So it's kind of like I missed that growth period that everybody oh, yeah. else got, where it's like, okay, now games are going to be way more intense. Yeah, because lots of games with now, customization and choice. Yeah, lots of games now will throw a lot of those types of mechanics at you. Um, there was one Alpha Protocol, which you would have hated by that earlier <laughs> metric. It was also during that era. Um, it was published by Sega. I forget who who developed it, mm -hmm. but it was a spy game that had lots of you know, like a choose your own adventure style path. But it was literally choose your own adventure. Like if you do this skip to page 15 and you miss a bunch of stuff. And there was a, I, mean, I would still want to play it, but it, it bombed, like critics hated it. Uh. <laughs> they gave it like fives and fours. They said the gameplay was terrible. See, that gives me severe anxiety, yeah. like that I'm gonna miss something because I still hearken back to, if you didn't get it during the playthrough, you're not getting it. Like that kind of stuff from the early Final well, Fantasies. It, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that like, I'm well, still like shaking when I'm playing, I'm playing Zelda right now. <laughs> and I wanted to sell something, I was telling him earlier, I wanted to sell a ruby, but I was so scared that I was going to need it later for some sort of weapon that I couldn't do it. I shut down. I, everything went black. I couldn't do it. Did you, did you get through it? I sold it, but like I, I'm still thinking about it today. And I this told him, rubies ago. are a dime a dozen. There'll be more. You'll, yeah. you'll, you'll, they grow in the ground. You find <laughs> yeah. them every time you dig in the No, I just have flashbacks. Final Fantasy VII missing the ultimate materia. Yeah. <laughs> I just, ah! <laughs> okay. 80 hours. Damn it, Sid. <laughs> That's why you keep a save file from like 40 hours back. Which I still don't do, but that's why you do it. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, so like to tie that into Mass Effect. So yes, you will, there's some things you will miss inherently because you'll make like choices, either do or don't do something. Either say or don't say something. Either say this that will help or say this thing you know will not help and then see what happens. But part of the, part of the magic of Mass Effect games is they're made to be replayable. Because you have, at least starting with the first game, I think there's six different classes. You can play. There's three main classes and then mixtures of the three. And what you can do is, like, you encourage to go back and play a new game plus with a different class. Mm -hmm. And then you can also make different choices as you go through. And it, it doesn't change where you go that much in the first one. It just changes what you do and how people remember your actions. Like, by so, the end of the first game, you can have different counselors on the council. Mm, like political yeah, changes. Yeah, 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 like on the political council in the game, like the, the Senate basically, you can have, you can change the face of that depending on your choices. Does the story change that? Like are there different cutscenes for every like, different variation of yeah. thing you could do? Yeah, yeah it's like the senators, are, uh, the councils are, are characters in the story. So they show up in cutscenes. If you, like it's spoilers for a 10 year old game. <laughs> the humans are like new in the galactic civilization. So you can help the alien, the human um, ambassador become the new senator and represent, human, represent uh, humanity. Mm -hmm. So if you do that, then he shows up as the counsel, one of the counselors for the next two games. And if you don't, then someone else shows up as one of the counselors for the next two games. Mm. What do you mean two games? Like Mass Effect uh, oh, oh, 2 sorry. and Mass Effect yeah, 3? Yeah, yeah, 2 and 3. Yeah, it all the, carries over? Yeah, yes, yeah. all the stories carry over through all three games. Yeah, your so, save file carries from game to game. Yeah, so, so it's a trilogy based on the whole story of the main character, Commander Shepard. And it's good? It's, it's really good. If you want to try to get in the, those games, uh, I would recommend that. That's, I mean, just knowing Steve, that's in got to be in your top five game series yeah, yeah, of all time. Yeah, the series is definitely in my top five. Yeah. I saw somebody this the other day asked me what my top five games were. I said Mass Effect Trilogy as one game is up there in the top five. 
Link's Awakening is probably the top. <laughs> or the second one, like, love honestly. It. I love it. But Mass Effect, it, especially as a, as a fan of sci-fi, captured my heart in a way that no other, like, series of games have, has done. It is on the list of games for Terry to play. <laughs> and what you can always do is pretend that you didn't miss any thing. But you can well together. I gotta try and be cool with gamers. Well, um, no, because like the games kind of support that. Because it becomes your canon since the save files carry over. Oh. So, so if you, like you didn't miss anything, this is just what happened. It's yeah, like yeah, life. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. This is your, your Mass Effect is... Like you had, say, like a female Commander Shepard who was a renegade and she kicked everybody off ledges she could and punched everybody in the face she could. She killed off this alien race of bugs because she hates bugs. <laughs> <laughs> she kicked, but, but she kept this like xenophobic crew member she had because she had a bond with that crew member. You know, the crew member was antagonistic for all the aliens that you deal with during the game, including other members of your crew. Like there's choices like that you can make. Wow. And then in the next game, like your game might have you playing with, um, Caden, who's the guy that was like the goody two shoes like crew member, mm -hmm. and then my game could have Ashley, who's the chick that kind of had like the problem with the aliens. But then she becomes she learns to change her point of view. Mm -hmm. But if you don't take her with you in the first game at the um, pivotal moment, she never learns that. You know, so like there's those type of choices you can make. You only find out by talking with other gamers about it. Or what I did recently was watch a bunch of stuff about Mass Effect Three on YouTube. <laughs> Which were wildly divergent from my game. <laughs> like I didn't know you could divert, you know, that far. Yeah, it, it could be that different. Wow. At that point, and that was, and then a lot of gamers didn't like the third game because the ending, like basically you have this game and everything's branching out all these possibilities, mm -hmm. and the ending everybody gets this one of three endings, which are the same endings still. So everybody gets one ending. Ooh. But what I liked, I can is, see how that be a letdown yeah. for some people. But what I liked is all the the branches on the journey there. Yeah. It's what I enjoy. It's about the, the journey, not journey, the not destination. The destination. Yeah. Yeah. That was literally about the journey, not the destination. Because yeah. the destination <laughs> sucked. <laughs> and then they tried to fix it, and it still sucked. There were literally three different color-coded versions of like the ending cutscene. One was red, one was green, and one was blue. That's the only difference. They tinted it. Yeah, they just tinted it, and it was, it, it was terrible. <laughs> so I say this now to let you know that as you go through the game, especially if you start with Mass Effect 1, but I would probably recommend you start with two. Well, just ignore the first one. I hate to say that because I love it, but the first one's very RPG-ish, but in a bad way sometimes. Ooh. Like you manually aim with the right stick, you're ridiculed to fire guns, but your accuracy is dependent on your accuracy stat. And the gun's accuracy So stat, even if you actually dial in and shoot them, it'll be like, you missed! Yeah, yeah you That's might miss tricky. just because you have a 72% accuracy with a sniper rifle, and so you miss. Now, the... The cure for that is you don't use a sniper rifle. You mm -hmm. use a pistol where you have 98% accuracy because you're trained in pistols. But some, you know, it, compared to the second two games, it feels very rudimentary. Because mm -hmm. then when you play the second one, it's more like a shooter, a cover-based shooter like Gears of War or something, which I guess you haven't played either. Another one I missed. <laughs> but, so like you kind of run around, you duck behind things, use your powers, and the guns, are, it's very simplified. It's just like shoot things or use your powers. And then the third one kind of brings it back all together and lets you do a mixture of things. Because you have, like, different powers your character can use that are, like, spells. And your party members can also use those same type of spells, and that's, that's kind of how you... Like, the, the meat and potatoes of the game is combining, uh, configuring a team that will bring out your best aspects in combat, and then you handle all the, all the talking. Steve loves Mass Effect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I could talk about it. It's much too long, but first we have that much time. Welcome to Mass Effect, starring Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and then the new one on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, we will not speak about that. <laughs> it didn't happen. It, okay. it's, 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 it's a new story. It's still the Mass Effect universe, but it's a different character. Everything's different. Save files do not transfer. Save files don't transfer. Okay. And it's, it's not... Um, it's not to the standard. It's not to the standard that Mass Effect 3 set for game, mixing gameplay and story. Mm -hmm. right? like, again, for the, f for the first 95% of the game, it does it well. Very well. Yeah. And the last five drops the ball, but I don't play games for the last five. I play games for the 95%. Yeah. yeah it's a big sweeping space opera thing. And like the games from that generation that I got into were the opposite, actually. Okay. Uh, I really enjoyed, it was the dawn of indie games. Uh, uh, so smaller downloadable more. games. Oh, yeah, that too. Oh, my God. There's so <laughs> many good ones. But like, uh, because this was the first like generation where online was a, a real accepted thing. Yep. Uh, you know, the, the systems were very powerful and had big hard drives that could let you hold vast worlds. Or 
you could download a $10 game mm -hmm. and play that and enjoy it. That was made by a small team of like one to like five people. Really, consoles never had that, I mean, for that price, yeah. for that distribution model. You know, arguably back in the NES days, five people made a game, but it cost 60 bucks. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now you can play kind of a more of a bite-sized game for 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Um, it, it's bite-sized, but it's filling. Yes. Which is what's great about it. And uh, I remember specifically the Xbox 360 was the, kind of the first pioneers of that. They had their... So that... Was it Live Arcade? Really there, right? Yeah, yeah. Xbox Live Arcade. Oh, yeah, 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 that was the, the system that first kind of reached out to these smaller game developers and pulled them into the console world. Uh, and I loved so many of them. Mm. I bought the system for a lot of those games. Uh, like... One of my favorite games of all time is Super Meat Boy, which you've probably heard about. Yep. Amazing platformer uh, with a hilarious aesthetic, uh, great sense of humor. It's great. Just like if you, and um, you can tell it's a labor of love of guys who love like Super Mario Brothers. Mm. Yeah. Games like that. I mean, it has the same initials. It is not an accident. SMB. <laughs> it's not an accident. Uh, it is all about wall jumping, precision uh, jumping over enemies. But and, and speed. And speed. Which I know speed. you like in the platform. I do like speed. Oh, yeah, and it's all smaller, self-contained stages that none of them take more than a minute to beat. Yep. Most of them take <laughs> a few seconds to beat. They take a few seconds when you practice them for a hundred times. Yes. You got good at it. <laughs> yeah. But, yes. It, it was cool. Um, these guys did gift me with a Switch, which was an amazing thing, and I turned it on. One of the coolest things was right there, bam! Sonic Mania, ready to go. Ten bucks. You in? Yep. And I was just like, ah! <laughs> I have another game. I can't. I can't have multiple <laughs> games. I'm one of those people who finishes one box of cereal before they go to the next. Yeah. And now this loading screen is constantly judging me with these beautiful indie games, but I could definitely see the appeal. Yeah. And this was. I came out at a time in my life where I was swamped with work. I had no free time, so having a smaller game fit into my life better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like having a game you can beat in five to ten hours is great. I love yeah. games that size. You can play for five minutes at a time and then put it down and get back to grueling work. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and there, there are other games you probably heard of. Braid um, is a... I know of it. One of the first big indie games, which was a side-scroller, a side-scrolling like platformer, puzzler. but it, its whole gimmick was that you could rewind time. Mm -hmm. So instead, when you died, you didn't lose a life, you just had to rewind back. So there was no death. You just had to rewind back and keep going until you got it right. Uh, and it had all this kind of... Um, so it's Prince of Persia. It's like, well, like Prince of Persia, yeah, but yeah. a platformer. Um, and it had more of an artsy, indie kind of story and aesthetic going on. Uh, so very different in feel from Prince of Persia. Was that in a movie? Prince of Persia, yeah. yeah they no, made... No. Braid. Braid, no, Braid, that no. was not a movie. Not, no. Indie game. Indie game. In, indie, game the movie. indie game, the movie. Reference. Oh, it. reference. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, so I do know what you're talking about. The guy in the little... Yeah, the looks tie, like a jacket, little Harry yeah. Potter dude. Yes. Yes. He's supposed to be a college professor, I think, or something? I thought he was a student. I don't know. I think he was a literary professor. Was I always think, think of Goodwill Hunting when I think of that character <laughs> yeah. for some reason. Uh, but that, that was, was are, there, are there stories in these indie games, or are they just like, let's hit the ground run and go? It depends. Uh, Braid had a story that was you could ignore if you wanted to, or get into. I'm not a huge story in game guys, to be honest. Like, I usually, I don't skip it, but I feel like it's tedious. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I've read it, and like, you know, it's, it's a little ponderous, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a story, and, if, and some people get into the lore a lot, and they make a lot of, like, it's one of those things where the ending is a little bit open-ended, yeah. so you can put your own spin on how to interpret it. So lots of people go back and interpret it in new ways. Uh, and Meat Boy has a story. It's a very rudimentary story, but it's, you know, evil guy, Dr. Fetus, mm -hmm. kidnaps the girlfriend of Meat Boy, who is Bandage Girl. Of course. Meat they Boy. They together. Yeah, they belong together because Meat Boy is a boy with no skin, and Bandage Girl has bandages, so they complete one another. Uh, but so she's taken away, and there are cutscenes between every world that actually have. There's just these, like, kind of Looney Tunes sort of um, uh, cartoons that something wacky happens, why Meat Boy can't get her this time. Dr. Fetus does something, and they're, they're actually funny. Oh, good. But, you know, it's not like a deep story. It's, <laughs> here is a, a setup for some really offbeat jokes. Now play a game. And cool. you're in it for the game. Yeah. yeah. So what about the, um, the classic series? Were there any installments of those that I might have missed that are worth seeing? I'm thinking of things like, uh, sorry if I'm offending anybody, I'm just going off the ad campaigns. I'm thinking the, like, Tomb Raider. I know had a rendition in that time. Don't know if it was good. Don't know if it I was I think bad. that was the one where they blew up Laura's um, mansion. 
in like the trailer or something, and she went dark and gritty. I, to be I honest, didn't play that was, one, but I remember that. I just remember like they reinvented the character almost. Like, well, they reinvented was, the character for the reboot, oh. which I think came out at the end of the. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, so it did come. Yeah, the, the new Tomb Raider came out. The Rise of yeah. the Tomb Raider, I think. Rise of Tomb Raider is a sequel. It's a sequel. First one's just called Tomb Raider. Tomb, just called Tomb Raider. Oh, okay. That game's great, actually. Okay, yeah, that, that, that game's, game's really good. good. Uh, and I don't like Tomb Raider usually. Like the old ones, I wasn't super into, uh, and I'm not into a lot of games like that, like, like Uncharted. Uh, I'm. I heard that was people. a great game that everyone has to play. Everyone loves that game. Everyone says it's one of the top. It was, it's a paragon of game design. I, I can't stand it. Like anything about it. <laughs> it's got beautiful graphics and great technology. And you played like the first all. two and like well, I played, the third one, yeah. right? I played the first two. Yeah. I bought all three for like you know four bucks a piece at GameStop. And I did not want to play anymore. Um, <laughs> and I was playing it. I was doing another podcast with my friend Marie, and she loves Uncharted. So uh, she's like, "Chris, you have to play these games so we can discuss them." And I just basically was like, "Why? Why do you like this? It's terrible control. The gameplay is all floaty. The button. It feels like you're just making little <laughs> movies happen one after another." I'm like, "Why don't I just play a Sega CD FMV game? Why don't I play Night Trap? How about that? Uncharted." Is Night Trap. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then funnily enough, the Tomb Raider reboot took what Uncharted did and made streamlined it and made it feel better. It's a game that is emblematic of that generation though. Like in any list of the best games of that generation, it'll be near the top or the top for most people. Yeah. And then to me and Chris, we played the Tomb Raider reboot, which took a lot of what Uncharted did, made it better, streamlined it, and added much better controls, especially the the bow shooting controls. Oh, um, shooting a bow in that game feels so a good. Revelation, yeah. so good. So yeah, yeah. If um, play Tomb Raider, the uh, the the reboot is it's worth your time, and cool. it's been ported to the next gen systems. It's on everything, basically now. That's really yeah. good. And so like part of what was awesome about that, especially compared to Uncharted, because I didn't like Uncharted either. I, w I didn't like it mostly for the controls. I couldn't get through the first half of the second game because the controls for me were, were floaty and loose, mm -hmm. and they just didn't feel tactile. Like anything I did. So you mean like moving like a gun? Yeah, 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 yeah moving or just move. Yeah, like if I was shooting enemies, I would shoot at them, and they were kind of like either fall over or not. <laughs> yeah. I had no real indication they were being shot except for like purely visual. When normally you get some kind of like either haptic feedback if there's rumbling, or you get some kind of feedback in the screen like there's a little sometimes a like they'll flash like a red flame, a red frame, mm -hmm. like quickly to be like, oh, this is a hit frame. Just because some games do that to give you a little bit of like visual oomph. Mm -hmm. And it was nothing like that. So it was like, I would shoot somebody five times. I don't know if I hit them five times or what. And it was, it just felt very weird. And then moving around the stage, I'd be walking around on things like this and tumble over. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, there's no edge, like <laughs> It's not obvious. Like what's going edge. on? Yeah, it's not obvious yeah. edge. And then meanwhile, Tomb Raider, there's things like, you can jump on grappling, um, like, did you ever play the Arkham Asylum game? Oh, yeah. That okay. one I made time for. Oh, okay. oh, so that one, yeah, that one. I made time for those because Batman. 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 Because Batman. Yeah. Another game that, um, that I saw a lot about was the Gears of War franchise. Like, that seemed like it had, it was a big deal when one of those games dropped. Yes. Was it a big deal? I have no idea because I've never played a Gears of War game. I've played them, actually. Okay. I'm the only one here who's played them. Uh, they're good. Uh, they're absurd. Like, the, it's all about meathead guys with necks twice say, as thick as their hair. They're, they're huge, and they're going through a stupid story. It's a stupid Fighting story. Fighting ground worms in space or something. Fighting aliens. Basically, dudes are fighting aliens who are invading. Well, they're not. They're, they're coming from underground. Aliens from underground. Okay. They've been living in Earth all the time. But they come, and you have to shoot them. That's all you really need to know, and the gameplay is actually pretty good. It's, uh, you, you move sort of slowly for, you know, it's not a fast-paced, quake-like sort of shooter. Okay. It's a third person. It was, I think, one of the first third-person shooters that really made that yeah. work. That well, that's why I brought it up, work. because I did hear recently that was the first time a third-person shooter type game started working. Like, there was a mechanic there that was different than had been in the past. Yeah, and it was uh, very big on, you know, taking cover. Chest high walls is, I think, the meme that it <laughs> yeah. spawned. You would come up to lots of chest high walls and duck beneath them and shoot and pop up. <laughs> uh, but it was a good game. Uh, it, it had a um, really interesting reloading system. So mm -hmm. instead of just hitting reload, there was like this rhythm thing. You had to hit reload and then a line would come up and you'd have to hit it at the right time to get a quick reload. If you didn't, you'd get a slow reload and you had to wait longer to actually shoot again. Mm -hmm. Which was sort of cool. In the yeah. heat of battle, it was like a background process you had to run. Um, the story's fun, stupid. Like, if you go into it, like, not expecting anything, it has some amazing lines. Okay. It has, um, what's it, is that Terry Crews? 
who who is uh? It's not Terry Crews, but he sounds like him. No, uh, that but, plays Coltrane. Yeah, this is Terry pretty, Crews. Pretty, it is Terry. No, yeah, it okay, is. It is okay. Who goes? He's like his character's named Coltrane. Okay. He's this guy goes <laughs> woo woo Coltrane, and he just goes around like breaking through walls and being a, a meathead. <laughs> and the whole game is like meatheads on parade. Yeah. Um, but the meatheads. One of the broyer games that I remember was Halo. Were there any Halos that should be visited? <laughs> See, the only Halo I played all the way through was on Xbox 360. It was Halo 4. Okay, I missed which, that. Yeah, so that was kind of the first Halo that wasn't made by Bungie. Cause they were off making Destiny. So they were working on that. They so some other studio Microsoft set up that they took like some ex-Bungie people, but also other people from the industry that worked on first-person shooters. And they made one that was just a nice, like at least gameplay-wise, like distilled version of Halo. Mm -hmm. And then added a bunch of shit on top of it. Uh, sorry, added a bunch of stuff on top of it. <laughs> Like there was, um, they had a jetpack okay. for the first time and, you, and things like that. A couple of new weapons and you can customize your armor while you're playing like online. You didn't have to. I think it was mostly visual, but you could. But um, How about the other game you just mentioned? Uh, also, Destiny. That seemed like it was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. It, Destiny, um, it it's was a spiritual big deal. successor to Halo from the same studio. Yeah, 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 yeah from, from Bungie, but it wasn't on the PS3 and 360, except. It was. Yeah, it was designed for PS4 and Xbox One, but it was on the earlier console, generation consoles. A for, version. Yeah, like the frame rate was lower, it looked less pretty, it loaded slower. Mm -hmm. But that was so they could get their stall base, because PS4 and Xbox One were very new at the time. Yeah. They had actually just come out like earlier that spring, I believe. So they were like, let's put it out so that everybody that, wants to, that loves shooters can play it, and then hopefully it'll move on to the next generation with the new game. But that game, it was very much... Um, I always like to call it Diablo on with guns. Okay. Because that's what the gameplay is. Yep, I <laughs> you you run around, you, you go into dungeons, you shoot stuff. You go into harder dungeons, you shoot stuff there. Sometimes you go into a dungeon with five more people, mm -hmm. and you shoot stuff there. And you go online, and you shoot each other. And it's a lot of shooting, but the gunplay feels really good. Like, like Uncharted didn't have, like, well, Uncharted lacked. It had feedback to everything. Each gun feels differently. And I assume that's how Halo was back in the day, too, but I never really played it. But, one, yeah, well, one thing actually I think you'll probably notice looking back on this is every game we're mentioning is about shooting. It's all shooter yeah. games. It was kind of a, a which, big... Yeah, which, which very much took over that generation. I don't, I don't yeah. mean talk about the Call of Duties because I didn't play any of them. I, I think I played one. Yes. But Call of Duty and Battlefield and Halo and Gears of War. And Halo and 2 and, and Halo and Gears heavy. of War 2 and 3. There were so many of them. There's a lot. Yeah. And, and it was a time in our lives, I think, when we were kind of falling out of that as like... The new hotness. Yeah, like, we already had played Quake on PC. Right. Because for me, Years like, before. Halo came out, and people were like, oh my god, I've never played a first-person shooter like this, and they were all console gamers. So it was, like, mm -hmm. a great console shooter, but coming from a PC world, I'd be like, well, we've been playing Quake and Half-Life for years, and, like, it's almost as good as those games, but it's yeah. not. And, <laughs> wow. and, and even yeah. coming from consoles, there was a Sega Genesis first-person shooter. I forget what it's called. It's like zero, <laughs> zero in, intermission or something. I think it's something with zero in it. But yeah, so it was like Doom style, where like the oh. bottom half of the screen was like your HUD, and the top half of the screen was like a 3D like maze with the walls that were paper thin. Like Wolfenstein. That, yeah, like Wolfenstein. So you walk around the wall, and the wall disappears because it's mm -hmm. a pixel thin, mm -hmm. like that type of game. But you shot bugs that crawled around on the ground, and they smartly cut the screen in half, so you only had half the screen to travel to aim, you know, vertically. Smart. To try to cut down on, you know. The fact that Take, you don't have a right take, joystick or anything, take. you don't have a mouse. <laughs> You're just trying to aim with a D-pad and some buttons. Yeah, the, the way I feel those consoles went, it was GoldenEye, mm -hmm. Beget, Halo, Beget, Destiny. Is kind of how it goes. With a bunch of um, cousins and Call of Duties yeah. and all those other things that came out, Battlefields and... This could kind of like my, my, like the, the high watermark of shooters and consoles, mm -hmm. specifically. Yeah. So what happened to the Final Fantasy series? That went crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, so Final Fantasy what is complicated because <laughs> what was the last one on PS2? Was it Final Fantasy X? Oh my god. Is it, no, 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 they kept going. I remember 12. Okay, okay. 12 was good on okay, PS2. Okay, so 12 came out on PS2. Then, right. Yeah. And then 13 yeah. came out for PS3. And, and then, then 13, 13 Lightning too. Returns. Oh. Which was the first direct sequel, I think they. What is 13 they Lightning so, Returns? So they had a sequel to a Final Fantasy 13, which they did. I think it was actually titled Final Fantasy 13 13. 2. Lightning Returns. No, 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 it was just... Is that the one with the girl? Yeah. Yeah, so she was a character in Final Fantasy Thirteen, and then they gave her her own game. Wait, did Thirteen have the blonde hair guy? 
Is that the big one? They are from blonde hair guys. Yeah. yeah. But like this thing, like I know that seven was a big one. I want to say twelve was a big one, but I guess I yeah. think this one was too. Well, like, and that's the thing because I don't know if Lightning. She might have been the main character of Thirteen. I never played Thirteen. We I never played, played those. I though. played the, the demo for Lightning. She Returns. was in a band, right? She was in a girl band. Probably, I think so. I don't. I, 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 mean, I don't read the commercial. I don't remember any of it. But yeah, so then that came out, and then Fourteen came out, which was the MMO RPGs. This, I fear this. <laughs> yeah. So that one, yeah, so you go online, there's a bunch of different races, you can create your own character, and you run around the world, do quests. Does All it stuff end? <laughs> it's an MMORPG, so no. no like, like the story no. ends, but they always give you new stuff to do. And there's new expansions, like, every couple months, it seems like they're announcing a new one. They, they went in a very strange direction in this generation, yeah. I feel, because they, they went into, like, quasi-real-time battles. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you had to do things in real time, um, and you had to do things online, and... They tried a lot of new stuff, and not much of it was successful from, like, you know, the fan point of view. Mm -hmm. um, I skipped although, all of it, so I can't lot, speak yeah. directly. Although, I guess to be fair, a lot of fans did like Final Fantasy XIII and the sequel, which... Well, fans will like anything. Well, <laughs> well the, the, the new one 15, came back yeah. with a vengeance, if I'm not mistaken. People, People did really enjoyed that one. Yeah, that yeah. one still has very much a real-time battle system, yes. though. Yes. Like, so much so, the main character, his... One of his main abilities is he can throw his like sword and teleport around. Oh. So like he can throw it into a wall and then teleport into a wall, and you have to do that to try to defeat enemies. Well, I'm a big Kingdom Hearts guy, so I do support that kind of gameplay. But yeah. to me, a Final Fantasy is having time to yeah, plan something. Turn based, out. yeah. Because I remember playing Chrono Trigger and that like real like that active battle system. I liked how active but inactive that was. Mm -hmm. Like I could act every time the bar was up, or I could choose not to. Yeah. You know, but now it kind of feels like you you have to be constantly playing it. And to me, RPGs are always type of game, like hardcore RPGs the ones I play when I might be doing something else. Or I might be like called away so oh, okay. I can stop and go do something. Especially if it's online, like so many games are online like, starting with that um, generation. You can't always step away. Like Destiny, you can't pause. Yeah. Because it's online all the time. Even if you're playing by yourself, it's still online. So mm -hmm. if you walk away, you can't pause it. Enemies can just find you and kill you. That brings me to mind another game of that era, Dark Souls, which I'm sure you've heard of. <laughs> heard of. I heard of Legendary you Difficulty. Cannot pause Dark Souls. It is very hard, uh, but it is one of the most beloved game series there is right now. Why? Well, part of the reason is because it had that Nintendo hard difficulty, mm -hmm. but it was tempered with the realization and the knowledge that you knew, you, you knew what you did. And you just <laughs> had to do better next time. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you didn't know what you did, but you have to figure out what it is you didn't do. And then you get better at it. And eventually it's one of those games where your skills for each game built up as you play it. It's a game they explain nothing. You're just set in this world and there are enemies coming at you and you can pick up some items and you can equip them through menus, but nothing is explained. There is there is a story and there's lore and you talk to people, but it's very optional. It's very and vague. Very vague. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot is open to interpretation. Uh, but basically it's like you fight this giant, disgusting creature you're not sure how you can beat it, oh my god, and you figure it out through gru grueling, grueling trial and error. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and like every time you die, you, you drop off your stuff. Like the, like the experience you've accumulated, because you have to level up manually. Yeah. So you have to get enough experience and then go to a place and level up. So you, if you die, you drop that experience in a little bundle and you gotta go back and get that bundle. Oh, okay. And then if you don't get it, and if, if you, you die, die. you get it again, then you drop a new bundle which has whatever you currently have and you lose you the old You lost bundle. the old bundle, it's just gone. So you die once. You, you better get back to life. <laughs> <laughs> then you better get back to where you died at. And if you don't make it back, you're well, effed. Yeah, so like it's a very grindy game. If like until you get good at it, it's grindy. Cause like and they but they set it up smartly so like like the first boss you fight, mm -hmm. there's like four enemies. But the first boss is like literally four enemies into the game. But if you die there, you go back and fight those four enemies, you get enough to level up. Gotcha. If you get past the boss. Yeah. So you can beat the boss at level one. Like it's designed so you can, but you have to figure out how you can do it. Mm -hmm. You can and, beat almost yeah. anything at level one. Like, if you're really good at the game, it's one of those games where you don't need to level up and grind. You're just good. Yeah. And you can beat it. Yeah, some people are beating the game. The speed runs online with... You start out... You can start out naked with a club. Well, okay. not naked, but one club. But with a club, no armor or anything. No skills. And people are beating the game like that. Yeah. What? Where... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can find them all over YouTube. There's videos all over the place for Dark Souls 1, 2, and I believe 3, they've done it too. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, me, I had to play with the guide open in front of me <laughs> on my tablet computer, and every room, I'm like, okay, what do I do in this room? Where do I go in this room? 
wait, I, I don't go in this room. Crap. <laughs> you got to go back and back. To, you know, like, but at the same time, like, I earned the muscle memory to be able to, even though I knew what was coming up. Yeah. I didn't know, like, I knew what might be in this room. Like, there's like, oh, there's an enemy in here. I don't have to figure out how to fight the enemy and kill it. But if you're really hardcore, you don't even do that. You just say, okay, I'm going to die five times until I figure out these patterns and then come back and kick this guy's ass. And what's interesting about the game is it's one giant interconnected world. Like, there is no loading. You're just, it's kind of like Zelda in that you are going through this world and it just opens up, up and down and left and right. Yeah, you find shortcuts everywhere. Everything loops back on itself. And it's, it's well designed. Like, the environments are beautiful. There's a lot of architecture. The enemies are interesting. It's brutal, though. Okay. Yeah, and that one doesn't game. have guns. No guns. I'm, I'm, I'm into that, you know? I, I, <laughs> I actually was one of those people that I didn't get into GoldenEye with everybody else. I didn't... I never cared for the first-person shooter as much as I did a third-person yeah. game or a side-scroller. Like, that's always... You know, I was raised on Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> Run around, collect the stuff. So there, the was, there was a Banjo-Kazooie on Xbox 360 <laughs> as well. It was uh, Nuts and Bolts, I think it was Yeah, called? Nuts and Bolts. It was... Very different. It made Ooh. most people sad. It oh. was about building race cars. <laughs> yeah. To compete in Diddy Kong Racing? <laughs> you, that would be cool. Is it the prequel to Diddy Kong Racing? <laughs> By the way, that is one of the hardest games. Diddy Kong Racing was very Mario hard. Kart, yeah. Yeah, Playing, Kong. Again, what's his name? Whizpig? Yeah. That was another one. He brought me to tears. Like, you had destroyed to be so controllers. Good. <laughs> okay, fellas. So, to wrap this up, uh, let's say I can play six games this year from the past, because I know they take longer. Mm. Give me six. Mass Effect 2? Three and three. Oh, yeah. So Mass Effect 2, Bam. I would say um, Super Meat Boy. Okay. I would say... What's one we just talked about? Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Uh, Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2. It's Do a little, I need one? You don't need two? one. No, okay. you, you don't need one. And 2 is a little more... A lot of the hardcore fans said 2 is too easy. But it was still a very difficult game. Okay. It just wasn't as soul crushing as one. <laughs> so it has a nice balance of it won't make you hate the game and stop playing it. Uh huh. But you'll still feel you you still feel the urge to want to get better. Like if you have that competitive spirit of like sure. I'm gonna beat this, it's perfect for that. So that's three. I would add to that, um one we didn't actually mention was uh Geometry Wars two. Geometry Wars was If you could ever find it again, I don't even know how you Well, it's on Xbox and Xbox One. They they ported it up. Oh but, yeah. Uh, Geometry Wars is about shapes shooting at each other. It's a twin stick shooter. It's like an arcade game, an old school arcade game, but prettier and great. You can play four players at once. We played hours and hours of that game. So many hours. It's really fun with people. It's really fun alone. It's one of those games where you're fighting for a high score, and it's fun at that. Yeah, and the cool. leaderboards are all online. Hopefully, they're still online on the yeah. new versions of it. And you just so like we'd be playing like in our own um, homes. And I'll play a stage, and I'm like, oh, I said I had a score. Ooh, that was grueling. And then look up, and it, it's like, Chris just beat your score. And you're like, he's done. And then I, I go back in, I beat his score, <laughs> and then I go back in, and he's beating my score again by the next day, because we just see the scores, and we're like, okay, we can top that. So yeah. it's like in a real arcade. It's like exactly. competing to put those three letters uh, in. Yeah. So fun. Uh, so that uh, Tomb Raider reboot, Tomb Raider, uh, simply called Tomb Raider. Okay. Really good. Uh, and then the last one, hmm, go wild card. You know, did you like Metroid games? I did. Like 2D ones? Sure. So, okay, there you go. Shadow Complex was another smaller game that was released. It is basically a 2.5D Metroid. It's about two a 2.5D? Yeah, so it's 3D graphics, but a side-scrolling game. Ooh, I and, like that. And really good. Pete, comics legend Peter David wrote the story. <laughs> the dialogue. So, I like Peter David. And it's all about upgrading um, your abilities to open walls that you weren't able to open before. You're just a normal human dude. Open walls? Yeah, so it's like, here's a rocket launcher wall. Gotta shoot a rocket launcher at it. Ah, uh, grenade launcher wall. Gotta get that. Yeah. And you, uh, what was cool about it was just like Super Metroid, but you could aim in an analog fashion. So you could, you know, get interesting down, angles yeah. while firing. Uh, it was great. It's good. It's and it was, really good game. They, they actually re-released it for all the new systems in like an updated high def version. It's great. What was the game? What was the name? Shadow Complex. Shadow Complex. Shadow Complex. No one plays that game and doesn't like it. I don't think it's very good. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's good to hear. I guess I got my work cut out for me. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you very much for hanging out with us uh, here at Tubby Robot Ice Cream Factory watching another episode of Tubby Talk. We talked games. I have a list of games to play. It feels good to be caught up. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys think there are other games that we missed? I'm sure there are. Um, <laughs> I'll pretty much, 
I'll play one a month. Let's figure that out. Everybody can throw a game out there, and I'll try and do a monthly new game. Burnout 3 Takedown. If you oh like racing my God. games. Oh, we just keep on going. Burnout. I might even want to replace one of my games with that. <laughs> Burnout 3. God. Burnout 3 Takedown. If, if you like racing <laughs> games at all, it was amazing. Burnout 3. Wow. Uh, what, uh, what kind of game? It's a racing cars. game. Yeah, yeah straight it's up cars. Car, car racing game where the goal is to smash the other racers off the road. Mm -hmm. And it, they have realistic looking cars with cartoony physics. So it works out. And there's a crash mode where you hit a, you have to hit a car hard enough, like billiards or pool, to make other cars fly into even more cars and cause chain explosions. And you try to set a high score by causing mass destruction. I agree with that pick, by the way. <laughs> just, just saying. So okay. I'm sorry. So I throw it in there at the end. I just remember. <laughs> no, that's no problem. No problem at all. Uh, and burnout. Takedown was by the same developers as Geometry Wars 2. Oh, yes. Okay, so, so, so they had a developer, there. do we know? Yeah. Like Criterion. Yeah. Criterion. They're, they're defunct now. Well, the original developers are, have moved on, but they made a couple of Need for Speed games mm -hmm. for 360, PS3, and then for PS4 and Xbox One. Did I miss any fighters? There weren't a lot of fighters that time. Uh, Soul they, Calibur 3. Like, they just kind of were rehashes of the yeah, old yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, there was lots of sequels. Okay, like, Soul Calibur 3 had Yoda <laughs> on one system and Darth Vader on the other system. Okay. Yeah. Like that type of thing, but that's cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, I got my work cut out for me, guys. This has been another episode of Tubby Talk. I am, of course, Terry. I'm Chris. I'm Steve. Come by, uh, come by, eat some ice cream, and talk to us about gaming. It's gonna be a fun time. And make sure you comment. This is about you. And don't forget to come to Manny. I can be a big fat nerd. Yes. Woo! <laughs> See you guys. See you guys later.